Today I'm talking about a 35mm f1.2 aperture lens for your Fuji camera that only cost about $100. This is my review of the Pergear 35mm f1.2. So let me start with a disclaimer. Pergear did send me this lens to review but they're not paying me and this video is not sponsored. I will do my best to give an honest opinion about this lens, but I went into this a little bias since I did own two Pergear lenses prior to this one and I like them. So the bar was raised a little bit from my previous experiences with Pergear lenses. The two Pergear lenses that I already owned were the 25 millimeter and the 50 millimeter, both 1.8 apertures. I got those in the summertime, right around the time I got my X-T1. And I've enjoyed using those, and I have reviews on those on my channel. So I'll put links in the description below, so you can check those out if you haven't already. Uh, but when I heard the rumors about the 35mm f1.2 for the X-mount coming out, I was hoping that it would look a little more like the 50mm than the 25 and I'll explain more in a, why that is in a second and thankfully it did um, this is the 35 1.2 which looks pretty much like the 50 so if you go back to my review of these other two lenses the, you'll you'll understand uh, why I like the design of this better but essentially although this is very convenient being as compacted as, as it is uh, I just I think the build quality of the 50 is just slightly higher and the usability of the focusing ring and aperture ring is a little better. So I was happy to see the 35mm adopt the design style of the 50. So just like the other lenses from Pergear, you get a few extras when you purchase it. So just like the other two, the box is very similar. This is the box the lens comes in and you get a pouch for the lens as well so it's very nice uh, a very nice bonus when you're purchasing you also get of course what you've already seen already the lens hood um, which is metal very well made and it is the same size as the other two so they're interchangeable if you lose one or if you need to uh, um, switch them out and it also included a air blower in this lens which the other two didn't have but this is actually really a really nice air blower it's actually better than one of the other ones I have um, so they impressed me right off the bat with their packaging and the things they included with the lens considering an air blower could be anywhere from 10 to 20 dollars and a lens hood can be 15 to 30 so just for a second I'm going to take the lens hood off and let's talk about the lens the lens itself so just like the other ones, of course, it has an all metal body, which is one of the reasons I've been impressed with the Pergear lenses. They make a really well-built lens for a crazy affordable price. So it is an all metal body, but it is slightly, ever so slightly lighter than the 50. This is 210 grams versus 221 grams for the 50. And obviously you know that this opens up to 1.2, but the other cool thing about the aperture range is that it closes all the way down to f22, which is really nice. The 50 only closes down to f16. It's nice to have that extra stop of control when I'm doing street photography in sunny Las Vegas and I need as many tools in my arsenal as I can get to control the light. So having the extra stop down is very, very convenient. To be honest, for street photography, it's almost just as important, if not more important than the 1.2. So I already talked about the aperture range f1.2 to f22. It has a really close focusing distance for a 35 millimeter lens, 50 millimeter equivalent. It focuses under a foot. Um, I was really impressed actually with the focusing distance. I'm pretty sure, and I'll have to double check this, but I'm pretty sure it focuses closer 
than my Fujifilm XF 35mm f2.0. So you're not going to get some super macro photography with this in and of itself. But being able to focus that close just gives you a lot of freedom for framing. So it has six elements and five groups, about the same element count as the 50. It has 10 aperture blades, and as you'll see with the photo samples, that helps create a really cool bokeh effect on this lens. I don't nitpick the bokeh, the shape of it, and what it looks like and whatnot. It's nice when the general background of a shot isn't so busy that it's distracting, but I like some character in the bokeh, so I'm not too picky about it. This lens is available for multiple mounts. Obviously this is the X mount version, but it's available for Sony E mount, Canon EFM, Nikon Z mount, and Micro Four Thirds along with the Fuji X mount version. Right now the price, brand new, is about $110 from per gear directly. Although right now as I'm recording this video, it's on sale for about $97. On Amazon, it's about $98, and on eBay, it's about $96. I will have affiliate links in the description below, but buy the lens wherever you decide to buy it, if you decide to buy it. But if you do use the affiliate links to buy the lens, that does help out the channel, and it is much appreciated. So I have a pros and cons list, sort of. The cons list is pretty short, and maybe this is because it only costs $100, and I'm a lot more forgiving. But really, to be honest, it's an overall good lens. But let's knock out the so-called cons list first. The one I mentioned before with the other two lenses is it does not have clicks on the aperture, which is what I prefer, especially when doing stills. That is really the main con. And uh, I could stop there and that could be the only one. Uh, the only other one I should mention, but it may only be my copy, is that it fits just ever so slightly loose on my X-T1 when my other lenses fit very snug. So that could just be my copy. It could just be some random thing maybe that maybe I'll try it again and it'll work better. But I have noticed a few times I've shot with this on my X-T1, it just fits just ever so slightly loose. Um, so your mileage may vary. It may not do that with you. Overall, it's difficult to find cons or negatives on a hundred dollar lens. So let's jump back to the pros and talk about the good things. Well, what I was excited about was getting another 50 millimeter equivalent lens for my Fuji system. I had the XF 35 F2, which was my first prime lens for the Fuji system. And it's one of the reasons, like I said before, it's one of the reasons why I decided to really dive into the Fuji system. I was really impressed with that lens. I learned on the 50 millimeter equivalent uh, back in the day on my Olympus OM10 film camera. So having the 50 millimeter equivalent on my Fuji system was something I really wanted. It's a focal length I get, I'm super comfortable with, especially shooting on the street in those scenes and scenarios. I just have a instinct about framing that focal length up. So that was one thing I was super excited about getting a 35 millimeter lens, which is a 50 equivalent for $100, pretty awesome. The build quality, like I mentioned before, is super impressive. For under $100, if you get it on sale, you get a lens that not only has a metal mount, but is completely made of metal. The 1.2 aperture obviously is a huge positive. And for many of you, it may be the reason you get this lens, which is totally understandable. I'll talk a little bit about my experience using this at 1.2 in a bit. But overall, it's it's a pretty good performer at 1.2. Um, I mentioned the packaging earlier. So the stuff that's included with the packaging, I think you throw that in the positives or pros column. Um, it just enhances the value of this lens. So your $100 is being used for a lot of good things, meaning that you're getting that uh, nice case for it and the lens hood. Um, the lens hood helps with the design as well because this style lens hood on here does just give it a Leica M mount vibe to it, which is super cool, especially when you're mounting it on these Fujifilm cameras that are already compact and have that classic street photography vibe to them. 
So the design of this lens is super cool. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's super compact. It's not a pancake lens, but you don't really don't get much smaller with lenses than this. The front ring does extend a little bit when you're focusing, but really it's not a huge deal. You'll be able to get a, a solid idea of the image quality from the photo samples I provide. And although I haven't compared this specifically to anything else, uh, meaning I haven't done side-by-side -side comparisons, after shooting with it a handful of times and looking at those images, my initial thought is that it has a sharper image, a better image than the other two Pergear lenses. I would say it's at least close enough to the 50 that I really would have to do a side-by-side -side comparison to be able to tell which one is better. My gut says this is the best of the per gear lenses that I own so far. Just like the other per gear lenses, this is a manual focus lens that has no electronic contacts on the back. So there's no communication between this and the camera, which is not a huge deal. Along with many factors, image quality also depends on being able to get focus, being able to nail focus. If you can't focus where you intend to, the image isn't going to be sharp where you expect it to be. So being able to focus a lens coincides with getting solid image quality. And right off the bat, it was much easier for me to focus with this lens than it was with the other two. And I can't quite say why. I have a feeling the contrast of this lens is slightly better. So the focus assist the focus peaking performs better on this lens than it does on the other two. That's just my instinct on the situation, but just I just know usability-wise, right off the bat, I was nailing focus with this when on the other two, it took me a bit to get into a rhythm and figure out exactly how I need to get focused with those. I think it's only fair for me to finally break down and do a comparison video between this the other Perger lenses, and also my Fujifilm XF 35mm. But for now, um, my best description of the image quality is that if this was my only lens, I would not feel I'm being shorted in any specific area. I wouldn't feel like I was falling short on color or sharpness or detail, or obviously on not on aperture range either. Um, I'd feel like I was overall covered in terms of no matter what kind of photography I wanted to shoot, this would perform really well. I say this with a lot of gear and it's definitely true with this. It's only when you start comparing it to other things that you're able to point out flaws. And that's what might happen when I get into a nitty gritty detailed comparison between this and the Fujifilm 35 millimeter. But to be honest, I was really, really happy with the image quality of this lens. So all of my image samples are street photography, street photography related. Uh, one nice thing about using manual focus lenses, and this is one of the reasons I was happy to get this lens, and what I was hoping the 25 millimeter would do, but this just works better because of the design, is that I'm able to do range focusing with this. So basically, if I know I'm just gonna shoot it at f8 most of the day, or even 5.6, but definitely at f8, f11, I can focus to about 10 to 15 feet in front of me, and have a huge range of focus. So I can almost leave it there and get a lot of candid street photography moments without having to worry about focusing and whatnot. At that point, it just becomes about paying attention to the environment and capturing the moment and capturing the scene. You can do that with almost any lens it's just more convenient when the focusing distance is marked on the lens itself. And that way you don't have to put your eye up to the viewfinder to double check. So that's one negative about the Fujifilm lenses that I own, at least the XF Compact Primes, is that although you can manually focus those lenses, 
you have to look either in the viewfinder or on the back screen to see where your focus distance is. So speaking of focusing distance, I already covered the fact that this focus is really close, which is really, really convenient. It just gives you a lot of flexibility with composition. Someone also asked about the aperture ring. Since the aperture ring is clickless, people are worried, and I was worried as well, about how easy it would be to accidentally knock this out of range. And I could say it's really sturdy and it's not that easy. I mean, obviously if you grip it with two fingers, you can knock it from the aperture that you're intended to be set on. But with one finger, I, re I would really have to put put intention into moving that. It's not, uh, it's not gonna move accidentally unless you accidentally grab it and turn it. So that's really convenient and really comforting to know if you're thinking about buying this lens. With any of these lens reviews, it's tough to review these to make everyone happy because everyone has a different style of photography that they might want to shoot, um, different lighting scenarios, different scenes. Everybody's decision-making process is going to be different. The fact that this is only $100 makes this a really interesting choice for your kit because it's fairly low risk. When making this video, I wanted to try to make sure I covered as much of the key information as possible to help you make that purchase decision. I kept asking myself, what would someone want to know to make that decision to buy this lens or not? What are they looking for in a lens like this? I think the 1.2 aperture is something that draws a lot of people to this lens. And I could say it's really, really nice it's slightly, slightly soft at 1.2, but nothing too crazy. And I think if you're using it for portraiture, it's going to be soft to the extent that it's complimentary and not a, a nuisance. If you're using it for street photography, it's tough to get shots at 1.2 anyways, to be honest. But if you do, you have that close distance focusing capability that you can frame something really close and get a really, really blurry background. So 1.2 is solid. Why are some of the other reasons why people might buy this lens? Well, obviously for price, but does it give you a good value for price? It totally hits above its weight class, as they say. In my opinion, it's a three to $500 lens with a $100 price tag. The best compliment I can give this lens is I love shooting with it and I wanna grab it to shoot with it more often. Uh, I can say the same thing about the 50. The only reason I wouldn't grab the 50 over this a lot more often is because this gives me a more flexible focal length for street photography. But I would grab this and the 50 over the 25 any day of the week. Uh, the 25 has solid image quality, but I just can't get into the way that lens is laid out and designed. It's almost there. I like the attempt at the compact size, but this is much better. I think if I had a couple small notes for per gear on this lens, and this is like creating a Christmas wish list. Uh, is a, I wish there was an option for clicked aperture. I'm sure there's a reason why they're all clickless. It's probably more convenient, easier to produce, but a clicked aperture would be amazing. Another note or two would be to bring the distance scale down just a little further so the numbers are closer to that crease. So you can see the focusing range a little easier and to also maybe make the metric colors versus the feet measurement different colors on the numbers that would be convenient to be able to see the difference really really quickly but other than that i mean it's pretty close to a perfect as you can get lens for a hundred dollars okay so this video is probably way too long already i have no idea how many of you have stuck around if you have that's awesome so here's a wrap up of my thoughts it's a great first prime lens it's a great primary prime lens perfect for street photography and would probably do pretty well for portraits that 1.2 aperture is really really nice and really it's amazing to get that at a hundred dollars you can get vintage glass that has 1.2 and 1.4 but obviously they're not native to the x mount so you have to have an adapter and that adds bulk so having a 1.2 lens that has the x mount is really awesome i really like using it i'll be grabbing it often so far it's been stuck to one of my cameras my xmh1 or my xt1 it's bounced around a little bit
It's been a great compliment and will continue to compliment my XF35mm f2.0, which is autofocus. Uh, it's nice to have two great 50mm equivalent lenses for my Fuji system. This is a low risk but high return type investment. And if you buy it for street photography to as an experiment, just something to play around with, I don't think you can go wrong. If you do try it out, let me know how you like it. And I'm gonna continue to shoot with mine. I'm gonna make a couple more videos about this lens. I have a couple other ideas on how I can test it and push the limits of it. In the meantime, I appreciate all my viewers, all my subscribers. Please like and subscribe and you know the drill. And keep an eye on this channel for more photography videos. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.